Right, testing double gauge track with a nine volt battery. Uh, got the two bills to demonstrate this. Um, essentially all the controller does is put power to that rail and that rail, uh, 12 volt. Nine volt is sufficient to run uh, a loco motor. So um, if you believe the controller might be playing up, um, you can use a battery to test the track. So all you do, that's got two terminals on it, spaced quite well apart to bridge the gap here. So if you just whack it on, so both terminals touch the track, the loco will move. And it will work in both directions, although for some reason mine's a bit slower on that direction. So there you go. And obviously when you switch polarity on a model railway controller by flicking the switch, um, all that effectively does is, all that's doing is changing polarity there. So forward, backward. This rear section is isolated from this section. Um, so if I've touched the battery here, this isn't gonna move. Um, you don't, if, if you touch the battery here, you'd wanna see it move. If it's on a separate section, it won't move. You can just about hear that there's a terrier moving because it is on the same section as that, if I can. That there, you'll see that that terrier is moving um, against that buffer stop. And it goes off forwards as I spun the battery around. And backwards when it's around the other way. And then again for the two bill, put it the right way around. And you'll see this should make it do a full circuit. Um, I'm gonna kind of follow it, but I haven't set the tripod up the best for this. Full circuit. Uh, so there you go, track works. You can see it's done a full circuit. So um, if I was turning the dial up on my controller um, and for some reason the local wasn't going the whole way around the track, uh, you can assume that the problem is with the controller or the way that the controller is connected to the track.